hello everyone in this video we are going to study about the projectile motion and now what do we understand by a projectile motion as you can see this is uh, the diagram of a projectile where it starts from a point like this the body moves over and, and comes to a point over here let me give you a basic example about this projectile if you have ever seen a cricket match you will see that a cricketer would hit the ball using a bat and the ball would fly and after flying would reach outside the boundary so this is the point where the ball is being hit and after flying through the air would reach outside the boundary this is a six in case of cricket now uh, this motion of the ball the path that the ball has followed is kind of a projectile the same thing happened in case in case of uh, uh, missiles fired from by a missile launcher uh, so this is the path followed by anything which you throw in air why does this happen when you throw anything on air it first moves in an upward direction due to the force which you had applied but now the uh, earth attracts it due to the gravitational force and it tends to fall towards the earth so the path followed by the particle would be as such now as i can as i have shown you a diagram this is the path actually followed by the particle the moment you had thrown the particle the point from which suppose you had thrown it is o which is the origin and the moment you had thrown it that is the exact time when the particle started moving away from you let the velocity of that particle at that very moment be u now this was the particle by which the this was the velocity that u was the velocity by which the particle initially started moving now in vectors we know that in vectors we know that if there is any vector if there is any single vector maybe a vector this a vector can be resolved as you know the vectors uh, for any vector it is named by an alphabet along with an arrow sign above it so similarly we have uh, drawn a vector a vector any vector a vector can be resolved into two components one will be along this direction and the other will be along the other direction if along with any of these two vector it makes an angle theta then the x component becomes a vector cos theta the the component along with the vector along the direction which is making an angle theta the component will be x cos the a cos theta and the component perpendicular to it will be a sin theta this is an important property of uh, vector which is known as the rectangular resolution of vectors this we will study in a different video but uh, let me give you a very simple example here i have given a very simple example that any vector a vector can be resolved into two components along the cartesian directions if it is making an angle theta with one of the cartesian directions then the component along that direction will be a vector cos theta and the component perpendicular to that direction will be a vector sin theta now as you have seen this similarly as the velocity with which the particle started moving was u so the component along the x direction along with which u is making an angle theta so here we should give symbols vector to it symbols vector to it and symbol vector to it so as it is making an angle theta with the x-axis so the component of velocity along the x-axis is u cos theta and the component of velocity perpendicular to the x-axis is u sin theta so we can say what we can say is that the x component of velocity let it be u x is equals to u cos theta and the and the y component velocity along the y axis is u sin theta how can we how could we write this based on the principle that any vector can be resolved into two components along one along the x axis and the other along the y axis the x axis component 
with which the vector is making an angle theta will be u cos theta and the y axis component with which the vector will be making an angle uh, and with the y axis it will have a component uh, which will be equal to u sin theta now over here we I am not using the I just eliminated the vector symbol we can use this later now as we proceed let us just consider the x direction component let, ju let us just consider the motion along x motion along x now what will happen in case of motion along x uh, I made a mistake by while uh, making the line let me correct it up motion along x direction okay now if you consider you might be knowing the equations of motion among that one of it is s equals to ut plus half a t square ut plus half a t square ut plus half a t square now this you have studied in uh, grades uh, 9 and in grade 9 you had seen this is the equation of motion even in the previous chapters of grade 11 you will find that s equals to ut plus a half a t square where s where s is the displacement u is the initial velocity t is the time taken a is the acceleration so if a body starts moving with a uni initial velocity u after a time t if it is having an acceleration a how much displacement will it cover we can calculate from this equation now we can we can use this equation in case of the motion along x axis now if you consider the motion along x axis if you consider the motion along x axis then you will notice that uh, the displacement will be the x coordinate the displacement along the x axis will be the x coordinate so in this case in place of s in place of s we can write x in place of s we can write x uh, which is uh, very important because if suppose it has moved to a point like this its coordinate can be written using the uh, x component so it will be like it will be the x component that is the component over here uh, so the displacement along the x axis will be x now the initial velocity along the x direction was now the initial velocity along the x direction was u cos theta as you remember we started off with this the initial velocity along x direction u cos theta into t uh, so if a time t has passed by it was t now plus half a t square and as there is no acceleration along the x direction as there is no acceleration along x direction okay before uh, moving any further we have considered um, in this special numerical that you have to give a star sign for this that initially 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 the body had the body had only velocity initially the body had only velocity but initially the body had only velocity but no acceleration but no acceleration along only velocity along x along x but but there was no acceleration there was only velocity which was the u cos theta component but no acceleration so over here in place of acceleration it should be zero in place of acceleration into zero into half into zero into t square so if you take it zero this portion totally goes away and you are left out with x equals to u cos theta into t u cos theta into t which gives you which gives you t is equals to x divided by u cos theta
theta x divided by u cos theta very good now if we take if we take if we consider the motion along the y axis if we consider the motion along y axis let me show you how we will proceed with that if, we, if I show you the motion along y axis it will be as such motion along motion along y axis motion along y axis how will it look the motion along y axis it will be the same that is the y component as we studied uh, it will be if the point the body has reached to a point like this then the position at that position the motion will be as such this will be the position if it has reached to a point like this then this will be the y part that is this much it has displaced along the y direction now what we can do y equals to uh, y equals to ut now what was the initial velocity along the y direction it was u sine theta it was u sine theta as you remember the initial velocity along y direction was u sine theta into t plus half now in this case we need to write the acceleration along the y direction as you know the earth always attracts a body along itself so there is an acceleration along the direction of earth which will be minus of g so now acceleration is due to acceleration due to gravity and as it is directed towards the earth that is opposite to the direction of motion that is why we introduce this minus symbol that is why you we introduce this minus symbol so i will explain you once more why do we introduce the minus symbol we introduce the minus symbol because the body is moving in a vertically upward direction whereas the force of gravity is acting in a vertically di downward direction so now minus of g t square now this is the equation this is the equation for motion when we consider just the motion along y axis now if you remember if you see this equation this one and you mark it as equation 1 and you mark it as equation 1 where you get the value of time in respect in terms of x in terms of x in terms of initial velocity u and its cos theta component and its cos theta component now once we replace this value of t if we replace this value of t into the second equation that is the equation of y uh, this is the second equation the equation of y then what do we get then we can eliminate t which we need we can eliminate t altogether and we will get an equation of this form we will get an equation of this form which would be y is equals to u sine theta into into x divided by u cos theta how did we do it we just replace the value of t from equation 1 we replace the value of t from equation 1 and we put it into this equation that is we combine the motion along x axis with the motion along y axis plus half into minus g into t square now what is t now t square now t was x divided by u cos theta square now as you can see this equation when you simplify it this uh, u and u gets cancelled off sine theta by cos theta becomes tan theta so it's x tan theta x tan theta plus half 
plus half into uh, so this plus can be removed and you can write it uh, minus this plus can be removed and you can just write it minus uh, half how did we write here minus because this uh, minus we take out outside the bracket and this become g uh, g mm, by g x square divided by u square cos square theta cos square theta this is the e this is the required equation and it's the equation of a parabola this is the required equation and it is the equation of a parabola parabola equation of a parabola that is why we can say that a projectile when thrown upward from the ground follows the path of a parabola this is a very important question in many of the board examinations of grade 11 uh, grade 11 examination both for the boards of ICAC and CBS of Indian curriculum where they follow this so as you can see this path from O moving through this then reaching say a point like this this path will be a parabolic path following the parabolic path thank you